ChatteracCoach.com, MSICS Week. We've had a bailout for the Rexus runout. So M6 saves the day when this case goes out. So watch this case here. You, you got a very intumescent white cataract. Good density too. Starting that Rexus here. And you know what's going to happen. No decompression. So you're going to get the Argentinian flag sign. That Rexus is going to want to run out. It's already getting away from the doctor. There's just no way to catch it at this point. You can try grab it from forceps. You can try pull it back. But look at that. It just keeps splitting out. Now, our guest here is Dr. Rishi Sethi from India. He's going to do a fantastic job, and I like this decision here. Convert to a can opener. So look at this technique here, the can opener technique, and that's just going to create a lot more little areas where you can relieve any pressure so you can spread out the forces among the whole capsule instead of focusing all of them on the one area that had the run out. So now in a case like this, you could still do FACO, but maybe a better part of judgment would be to do SICS or M. SICS, the Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgery. And that's what we're going to show you. The videos all this week are MSICS. And that's because it's a very important technique that you have to know. You can't be an only FACO surgeon. The answer to everything is not always just FACO, FACO, FACO. There are cases where you want to do something different. And in that case, is going to be here. You're going to do an MSICS. So notice how the can opener, you really got to take your time. You got all the way around for this. And split that open. Now remember, even in the early days of FACO, the can opener capsulotomy, like this was the common method. There was the Christmas tree capsulotomy. All these are old techniques that predate me by many years. I never learned to do any of these other than the can opener, which I did at the beginning of my residency at the encouragement of attendings at the time. But that's more than, that's probably 25 years ago. So once this is done, you really got to take your time to make sure you have a complete opening here. And you can see that nuke is going to come up. So the key now is to make an incision here. So what we're going to do here is go inside the eye. First, put a traction suture. This is a superior rectus traction suture. Now, that's not totally required here. But in this situation, we're doing it to give better exposure. And now pruning is going to be done. And now if you're doing this under top anesthesia, you need to add anesthesia. This is ideally done with a retrobulbar anesthetic. You can also do some subconjunctival or sub tenons anesthetic, but you need to do more than just topical. So now using a blade here to create a half scleral depth groove, and that's in a slight frown orientation this time. Sometimes you can do a straight incision, sometimes you do a slight frown. Key is that it's half scleral depth. It's about a millimeter and a half posterior to the limbus. And you can see this is gonna be a nicely tunneled incision. So tunneling into the cornea, about a millimeter into the clear cornea. And then also look at that, sawing it towards the sides, trapezoidal shape, right? Internal opening, a bit wider than the external. That's the trapezoidal shape. Key in SICS, trapezoidal shape of the incision and a good tunnel length. That's gonna allow that incision to seal very nicely. Now you can go into the keratome and enter in here. In this case, you can see that this tunnel is actually probably two millimeters into the cornea. And that works too. So here we go. And now you've got a nice opening and this whole nucleus can come out of the eye. So a neat case where you had a complication of a run out rexus from an Argentinian flag sign, an intumescent or pressurized cataract, and now here, viscoexpression of the nucleus, and there it comes right out the incision. Just injecting that viscoelastic behind it creates the pressure gradient, so it pops out of the eye, and the nucleus is out. You can now wash away any residual lens material, lens cortex. A lot of heme there. I would have liked to have controlled that at the beginning. Notice how the heme now goes inside the eye, so this is why doing a little cautery at the beginning sometimes can be quite useful to prevent that. And then this whitish cortex is pretty soft. It can be aspirated or simply just flushed out of the eye. So you can release the attachments to the capsule bag and that should just flush out of the eye pretty quickly. And the case will then be finished up. So we showed another case a few weeks ago from Dr. Jack Shaw, who's an ophthalmologist at the Cleveland Clinic. And he had a beautiful case that was similar. His was just an absolutely brunescent or kind of root beer colored cataract, which is so dense that FACO seemed not possible. So he stopped in the middle of his case and converted to SICS and gave the patient a beautiful result. So here's the end of the case, lens goes in the bag and then washing out any residual lens material, there's some, still, some stuff that has to be washed out, that can be washed out after the eye is in the bag. 
And this patient has a beautiful outcome. So this patient will be very happy. And now you know how to use this bailout technique if you need to, to convert from FACO to MSICS in tough cases like this. Thanks for watching.